shallow water, duplication bugs, slow mode building, habitat advertisement, camera collision, and so much more. We will cover in today's top 10 building tips and tricks video part two in Planet Zoo. So this will be a new addition to the top 10 building tips and tricks video we made earlier on the channel, where we cover things as creating round buildings with the mud pillar technique, advanced path options, no collision to be able to add a terrain around fences and enrichment items, and so much more. So if you have not seen that video yet, I highly recommend you to watch that video as well after seeing this one. Hey everyone, my name is The Lady Designer and today we are back with another top 10 Planet Zoo building tips tutorial. If you enjoyed this video and find it helpful, then please do consider to leave a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel, of course, if you haven't already, to stay up to date with all my Planet Zoo content. Now, without further talking, let's jump into it. So with Planet Zoo, we have some really great terraforming tools to create the habitats of your dreams. While most of these terraforming tools and shapes make total sense, there was one that had me scratching my hat a bit the first time I saw it. The flattened hoot terrace for shallow water. But this one may actually be the most useful one of them all when it comes down to adding shallow natural water bodies in your habitat. So all you need to do is grab the tool and make sure the shallow pool offset is turned on. You can also turn it off but then it's not always certain you are able to add water so by turning on the shallow pool option you always know you will be able to add shallow water in your habitat and by using the smooth tool you are able to make some really nice and smooth looking edges on the sides of your shallow water making a perfect spot for your animals to drink from now you probably already know by now that you are able to rotate pieces with your z key by holding it or pressing it once and when you press x you are able to get into the 3D gizmo and are able to rotate pieces from there. But two options I really wouldn't want to live without in Planet Zoo anymore are the random rotation and random rotation all options. With random rotation, you are easily able to create nice looking rocky floors with, for example, the small aquatic rocks. And to make things align better to terraform terrain, you can also use the align to surface option while placing these rocks. But to make your rock work stand out more and make it look even better, you also have the random rotation all option, which will rotate your rocks or other pieces in so many random angles, especially if you have these two options turned on together. And when doing this, you will barely see that you have placed the same rock over and over again. So this option comes in so handy when doing a lot of rock work in your habitats, but you can obviously also use it for branches or logs, for example, to make your habitats and nature look a lot more natural. And also a little bonus tip, something I learned from the Awesome Leaf Productions. When building, you can also use the V key of your keyboard to turn on and off a line to service to hold your rocks in any angle that you want. Now, something added not too long ago is the new widget speed control option, which allows you to slow down the speed of how fast an object or objects are moving when building. This will definitely come in handy when you are really into small details detailing and you want to perfectly place down all your objects. Definitely also an option I need to use more myself as well, but I keep forgetting about it. Now, some people may have seen them for a while now in the game, but have no idea what they exactly do. Curbs and barriers. Curbs are super handy, for example, to close off path in the middle if you only want a path to be used as a viewing gallery and not for people to walk from one side to the other side of your you. So as long as there's a different way for your guests to walk, they will not walk over the curb. But when there is a bottleneck or nowhere else to walk to go to their next destination, they will walk over the curb. You can also use curbs for a normal path leading to your staff buildings, for example, when you don't want guests to go there. So staff will still walk over them to go to their staff buildings, but your guests won't cross them. So you don't have to use the ugly staff path anymore.
all. Now, barriers, on the other hand, are very strict. So whenever you use barriers, both guests and staff will not cross there. This comes in handy when creating more narrow doorways, for example, and you don't want guests and staff to walk partly through a wall. Or when you sometimes see guests looking inside of a habitat, standing over the edge of a path and sometimes even floating when having a floating viewing gallery. So by adding a barrier underneath this section, you make sure your guests will never stand or walk there anymore. Super handy. And this also comes in very useful when you have a nice plaza with a fountain in the middle, for example, or maybe you have a building with some pillars or trees in the middle of the path and you just want to make sure that your guests and staff will always walk around it and not go through it. Definitely some super handy pieces when building in my opinion. So when you have areas or habitats in your zoo that guests ignore a little bit too much, you could try to add vista points. You can simply put one down and add a focus point and this will attract some more guests to this area to check out the focus point you selected for them. This also comes in handy when you for example want your guests to have a look at statues or other centerpieces for example. And another thing you could try to do is adding TV screen advertisements. So for example you have a few habitats far away in your zoo and not that many people go and visit them. You can add some TV screens at your entrance and set an advertisement to your habitat so they get an extra reminder of these habitats they might want to visit or other things like restaurant buildings or shops. So now how often did it happen to you that you were building a planet zoo and the 3D gizmo was failing so hard on you making it almost impossible or at least super frustrating to create details in a straight line. With this little trick this will not happen to you anymore or at least not that frequent anymore. Just simply put down the pieces you want to duplicate then add one extra item and then select it all and you will notice it is a lot easier to go in one straight line. Now do keep in mind that not all the pieces work the same in the game so this will sometimes be something you have to play around with a little bit to see if this trick works or not but this is definitely a really great way to avoid too many frustrations when trying to duplicate things in one line. And also a little tip in case you didn't know you can press spacebar to turn on and off angle snap while building. When building underwater viewing galleries you will sometimes have to adjust the fencing to make sure it's closed off while at the bottom of your water area. By simply using the flat top and editable bottom height mode you are very easily able to drag down your fencing so everything will be nicely lowered and connected to your terrain again. So have you ever placed down any coolers, lights or speakers into the ground and for whatever reason you want to remove them again or change their position or speaker options and you simply were not able to click them anymore because you just added too many pieces around it. With the disabled camera collision with terrain option turned on you are able to go into the ground so underneath your zoo terrain. Simply select the piece you need and move or remove it with this collision option turned on. This definitely avoids so many frustrations when you try to select a certain piece which is so hard to reach when it's placed into the ground. So yeah, definitely a very good one to keep in mind. And when you are misclicking the extra handles at the 3D gizmo too often, simply just go to your game settings and turn off the handles in there so you won't be bothered anymore by these extra handles that some people just barely use. Now for some people super common to use but for others like oh my gosh I totally forgot about this being a thing now. The new bulldozer tool. With all these extra settings and being able to adjust the size of your brush it's easier than ever to remove parts of your zoo in seconds. Just turn on and off whatever you like to remove and use the brush wherever you want and deleting things have never been this easy. So yeah, this was my part 2 of 10 building tips and tricks for Planet Zoo. Let me know if you did find these tips useful in the comments down below. Leave a like at this video if you enjoyed it and definitely make sure to watch my first top 10 tips and tricks video if you haven't seen it yet because I'm sure there will be lots of super helpful things in there. Hope to see you there!